Don't drink series. Just enjoy it, please. Thank you. Wednesday, the 2nd of September, 1942. Dear Kitty, Mr. and Mrs. Vanden have had a terrific quarrel. I've never seen anything like it before. Mummy and Daddy would never dream of shouting at each other. The cause was so trivial that the whole thing was a pure waste of breath. But still, everyone to his own liking. I always have bad luck. I smashed one of Mrs. Van Dan's soup plates into a thousand pieces yesterday. Whoa! Uh-oh. Oh! oh. Couldn't you be more careful for once? That's the last one I've got. Last week we had a little interruption in Monathan's life. It was over a book about women and Peter. First I must tell you that Marigot and Peter are allowed to read nearly all the books that Mr. Clufius lends us, but the grown-ups hold back this particular book on the subject of women. What is it, Margot and I are not allowed to read in this book? Hmm, he shouldn't be doing that, but if his father found out, then he'd be in trouble, so I won't say anything. Later. What? <laughs> there will be no more of this. Huh. I'll get that book somehow. Meanwhile, in the kitchen. Mrs. Frank, what do you think about all of this? Well, there is a great difference, Mrs. Van Dan, between Margot and Peter. In the first place, Margot is a girl, and girls are always more grown up than boys. Secondly, Margot has read quite a lot of serious books, and does not go in search of things that have forbidden her. And thirdly, Margot is far more developed and intelligent, shown by the fact of her being in the fourth form at school. I agree, but I still think that it's wrong in principle to let children read books which are written for grown-ups. At 7.30. Ooh, it's time to go to the private office. Yes, because it's 7.30 p.m. Yay, let's go! Oh, I love the music, yeah. Later. Yeah, let me make it so cool, yeah. <laughs> Clean the book back now. <gasps> Peter! You have the book! Peter, now I've had enough of this. Ugh, now go to the attic right now. He's not having any supper tonight. At dinner. Pass the salad, please. Thank you. I say, I'm not coming down anyway. <coughs> I've had enough of this. <gasps> Wait, Mr. Van Dan. I'm coming with you. All right. Like I said, he's not having any supper tonight. But can't we just save a slice of bread for the dear boy? No. If he doesn't apologize soon, we'll have to sleep in the attic. But I am you going to get this cold and I can't call a doctor? Oh my gosh, I mean, no, I can't do that. Like I said, no. He's in the attic already. 
Mr. Vanden knew nothing more about it, but I noticed the next morning that Peter's bed had been slept in. Peter was back in the attic at seven o'clock, but Daddy managed with a few friendly words to persuade him to come down again. Sarah faces an obstinate silences for three days, and then everything went smoothly once more. Yours, on. Thank you for watching! Last week we had a little interruption in one of this life. It was over about a book about women and Peter. I mean, it was ah! later. Or you... what? Stand up. Later. Ah! Gar! Mr. Frank, I'm. Yeah, I mean, Mrs. Frank. Mrs. Frank, what do you think about all this? Press stop! Well, there is a great difference, Mrs. Van Dam, between Margot and Peter. In the first place, Margot is a keep the camera up! Wait, Mr. Van Dam. Oh. Mr. Van Dam did nothing more about it. But I noticed the next morning that Peter's bed had been slept in. Peter was back in the attic at seven o'clock. But Daddy Man with a few friendly words to persuade him to come down again. I mean to persuade him to come down again. Sarah faces an obstinate silences for three days, and then everything went smoothly once more. Yours, on. Out of my head!